Hello, welcome to our service meeting. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The day that Jesus conquered death. The day that he rescued us and saved us from death. Hallelujah. Happy day. He washed our sin away. Let's praise God.
the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will under you. so good to be together in the presence of the Lord. Do you believe in the power of prayer? Do you believe that God can answer prayers? I do. And I would like to pray for you now. I would like to bless your life, bless your family. Let's close your eyes. Let's pray together. Let's ask God to come upon us now and to bless us and to, and to guide us and to show us His will. And also to open doors that are closed because I do believe that God is powerful to move in your life. Father, I thank you very much for being now together with my family and faith. Even though we are not together in, the, in this building, but we are united by faith. We are united by faith in Jesus Christ. And I would like to pray for those who are suffering, Lord, for those who are in pain, Lord, for those who are fighting with problems, health problems. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless each one of my brothers and sisters, Lord. Touch their lives now. All disease, all sickness, I rebuke now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for those who are having problems with their breathing in the name of Jesus lungs be open now in the name of Jesus and this person can start breathe, breathing in a normal way in the name of Jesus all the pain in your back I believe that God is touching your back now and I declare be healed in the name of Jesus be healed now in the name of Jesus Father come upon this house now Lord you know how much they are fighting how many problems they are having in their family now and I pray that you touch this family now Lord release peace upon their hearts Lord all the bad understanding all the troubles between husband and wife Lord I pray for you to bring peace now upon this house Father in the name of Jesus Lord and I pray for you to visit this son that sometimes is not obeying his mother, Lord. This son that sometimes is seeking for troubles, Lord. I pray for you to release him, Lord. I pray for you to bless him now, Lord. Bring peace, Lord, upon this house, Lord. Bring peace upon this family now in the name of Jesus, Father. Also, I want to pray for those who are seeking for a job, Lord. You know how much they are fighting. They are having problems financially, Lord. And I pray for you to release this job, Lord. Open this door, Lord. Open this door, Lord. And, and bring this job that they are seeking, Father. And I pray for you to keep moving, Lord. Keep guiding, Lord. We pray also for our country, Lord. We ask for you to visit Ireland, Lord. We ask you for you to bring revival upon this nation, Lord. We ask you for you to visit this nation, Lord. We ask you for you to change, Lord, the heart of those who are so, Lord, far away from you, Lord. Bring people back to your presence, Lord. Strength the church in Ireland, Lord. Strength your people, Lord. Oh, Lord, and help us, Lord, to be an instrument here in this in this place to bring your kingdom, Lord. May this church, may all the churches, Lord, in Ireland, Lord, be, na, be an instrument to bring, bring your kingdom, Lord, to this earth, Lord. Bless this country, Lord. Bless Ireland, Lord. And help us, Lord, to be a, a place, be a country, Lord, that your name is glorified, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you very much, Lord, because you are always with us, Lord. And I pray that you keep touching each one of us, Lord, and help us to understand what you are going to talk through the preaching today, Lord. May we be blessed, Lord, and rejoice in your presence more and more. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. Hello, everyone. 
It's so good to, to see you here again. It's so good to be here, to praise God's name, and to hear a powerful word from God. Before I start my message today, I want just to give a, a device, a warning to our brothers and sisters of our church here in Shalom, in Ireland. Uh, please, my brother, my sisters, don't forget of your tithes and offerings. You can bring your tithes and offerings to your church to bless the, the God's work here. We, we need your help. The, the kingdom of God needs you. So please, you can just go on some leader's house or even our pastors, myself. You can give your money. We're going to bless your life. And also, we, we have to be glad in God's presence because he has been so good to us. So use your thankfulness to bless the kingdom of God. Amen? So today, we're going to use, again, the Bible. I love this book. We can, when, when we read this book, we can go to the past, 2,000 years, 3,000 years ago. And we can see there, God knew it about what would happen in our days today. When he was in the past, he used many men. Many men here on earth just to wrote, to write some things that would happen in our days. This is the power of God. And today, we will talk about the Lord of times. This is the title of our message today. The Lord of times. And I hope you are blessed by it and you are able to apply lesson from it in your life. So open up your heart. Let God move inside of you. Call your friends, call your family to watch this video and receive this powerful word in your heart. Amen. So to speak about the Lord of times, first of all, we have to speak about us, about human being. When we look at the Bible, we have a warning about how to use our time here on earth. I'd like to read it to you in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. The Bible says, Look carefully then how you walk. Pay attention. Look carefully then how you walk. Not as unwise, but as a wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. We have to manage our time here on earth. God gave a time for us here to use in a good way to God's glory. And in human beings, me and you, we have a time different from God. Did you know that? Our time here is called Chronos. Why? Chronos refers to minutes and seconds. It refers to time as a measurable resource. We think of having 24 hours in a day. We define our work week by the numbers of hours that we work. We have a list of things to do and only so much time to get everything done. Mankind is limited. We are limited. We have a short time here on earth. Did you see that? Some people die at the age of 20, 30. And others die with 8, 90. But everyone here has a limited time to live on earth. While we are alive, we expect things to happen and we wait to see good things unfolding. The word times, the word time means the measured or measurable period during which an action, process, or conditions exist or continues. Time means period. Sometimes we have to wait a period of time to overcome a situation. It's hard. Time occurs as a process. Everything on, on earth has a time to happen. And you can look with me in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. 
that there is a time for everything here on earth. The Bible says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain for embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silenced and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. There is a time for everything under heavens, my brother. And usually, we don't like to wait, isn't it? Just think about, do you like to wait for someone? Do you like to wait for something happen in your life? Usually, we don't like to wait. And are you able to wait? Do you have patience to wait for something? Sometimes we get tired of waiting for someone. We get desperate when we spend too much time in a difficult situation. When we are lining up at the bank, <laughs> at the supermarket, and our time is wasted, we get furious. When you are waiting for an answer from God, you start to try to solve with your strength, to solve your problem by yourself. Because you and me, we don't like to wait. We are limited. And because our life is limited here on earth, we have a beginning and an end. We fear we won't get to live our dreams, to do everything we want with our family or even for our church. We have a big problem. Sometimes we are too urgent. We have everything we want to see everything happening fast in our lives. We have no patience to wait. And we want to drag God into our sense of time. Into what we are living. We think that God needs to move according to our time. Hmm. We are wrong. We are wrong. Do you know why? Because God is the Lord of times. He's the Lord of times. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah... Chapter 44, verse 6. This is what the Lord says. Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Hallelujah. Apart from me, there is no God. God has no beginning and no end. He is the beginning and He is the end. Hallelujah. Nobody came before God. He was the first. He was not created. He was not born. He is the creator of all things. Before Him, nothing ever existed. He is the Lord of times. He is the Lord of space. And He is the Lord of all things. Amen. And His time. Is different of our time. Our time we call Kronos. We live here and we, we know that we have minutes, seconds, hours, days. But with the Lord, it's different. God has a time called Kairos. What does Kairos mean? The time of God. In Christian theology, the term Kairos describes the time of of God, which cannot be measured. Because for the Lord, a day is like 1,000 years. And 1,000 years for God is like a day. <laughs> the time of God is like eternity. We cannot measure. We don't know what, where, uh, when it started and when we'll finish. 
because the Lord, He is our God, the Lord of times. In the same sense, Kairos becomes an attribute of God. It means He can go to the past, pay attention, God can go to the past, God can live in the present, and God can travel to the future and be back to whatever time He wants. Hallelujah. He's above our linear chronological timeline. He can go to the past whatever time he wants. He is here also with us. He went to the future. He knows about today. He knows about tomorrow. He knows about one year after today. He knows everything because he is the Lord of times. He cannot be hold by time. <laughs> he is out of this time that we know. He is the Lord of times. He creates every time. He creates everything. The time, the space, and the matter. Look with me in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Pay attention. In the beginning, there is a time God created. God created it. It's a space and God create earth. It's a matter, material, matter. He created time, so time cannot rule over him. Hallelujah. He is not limited by time. He created everything. So nothing the universe can go against him and take him surprise. <laughs> no. <laughs> God is not surprised with things because he knows everything. He created earth. He knows that we live here and there is no difficulty in his action because he knows everything. Pay attention. The Bible says that God is the one who was and this and this to come. He is the greater I am. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our God, he is the greater I am. For God, the past or future don't exist. He is in the present. There is no time to stop God from doing something or going somewhere. God is the Lord of times. And I want to show you today three examples of what God can do about time. To bless you and call you to live his purpose. You're going to realize that in all these three examples that I'm going to teach you today. The people, they had to take the first step to live God's time. God, he has a plan because he knows everything. He's the Lord of times and he is calling me. He's calling you today to live his time. But for live it, we have to give our first step. Are you ready? So the first one, the first lesson we have today, the Lord of times brings back good days to you. Hallelujah. The Lord of times bring back good day to you. When the king Ezekiah was sick, he decided to give the first step to follow the Kairos time, the time of God. Because if he depended on his natural time, he would die. So he prayed and God hear him. Hallelujah. My brother, God is waiting to see you taking the first step to enter into his time. To live and see how he lives and sees. So the prophet Isaiah come again to the, to the king Ezekiah and he asked God for a sign of Ezekiah's healing. We can read it in 2 Kings 20 verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, Isaiah answered, this is the Lord's sign to you that the Lord will do what he has promised. Shall the shadow go for, forward 10 steps or shall it go back 10 steps? It's a simple matter for the shadow to go for 10 steps, said Ezekiah. Rather, have it go back 10 steps. God, he's allowed the sun to go back 10 steps. This was how people in the past looked at the time. They counted the time by the steps of the stairs. 
when they saw like the the sun come and the the, the shadow coming upon the steps of the stairs, they realized the time that they have yet and the time that they spent in that day. So this is uh, an old clock in that age. And when Zechariah asked to go back 10 steps, he asked God to turn back time. He was praying like, God, I want to turn back the time, please. I want to see your miracle. Perform a nice miracle for my life. He asked to live good days again. He was crying out to God, give my life back again. Heal me completely. I want to live good days again with no more pain, with no more disease. And God did it. Hallelujah. He is the Lord of times. If the sun's shadow went back 10 degrees, it means that God reversed the direction of rotation of the earth causing an entire planet to go back 10 degrees and that miracle the science explained that miracle added at least 39 minutes and 50 seconds to that day God he changed the rotation of the earth in that day just because one son because one son prayed because one son cried out to God. He changed the rotation of the earth <laughs> for 10 steps back to add 39 minutes again, just to give a good days back to Ezekiah. Could you imagine that? God moved a holy planet just to show he would fulfill his word. What can he do for you? What do you want? What God can do for you, my brother? Are you having a hard time because something wrong happened in your past? I tell you, if you come to Jesus today, the Lord of times, he can reverse the missed time to restore your life today. He can bring back the good days into your life again. Hallelujah. You feel his joy coming upon you again because he is the Lord of times. So the first lesson is that the Lord of times brings back good day to you hallelujah the second lesson today the Lord of times changes everything and he fights for you hallelujah he changes everything because he loves you and he wants to fight for you the Bible says in Joshua chapter 10 verse 12 until 14 a story about Joshua. He was fighting against the enemy, uh, against the enemy of Israel. And when he was there fighting, he asked more time to God to overcome that situation. And God heard him. Let's read with me. Joshua 10. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Son, stand still over Gibeon, and you moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the nation avenged itself on its enemies, as it is written in the book of Jachar. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky, and the lady going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since. A day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Hallelujah. Joshua and Israel, they were fighting against the enemy. And they didn't have enough time to conquer that battle. So Joshua, knowing his God, he knew his God. He gave the first step to receive something from God. He prayed. It was the first step that Joshua, he gave. First step, prayed to God. And he prayed, sun is still. Moon is stop moving. He was asking more time from God to overcome the enemy. God, our Lord, stopped the time in that age and he gave more hours for Joshua to conquer that enemy 
And the Bible says, God was fighting for Israel on that day. Hallelujah. What can the Lord of times do for you, my brother? Lord, he stopped the universe to give victory to his people. He can stop this hard situation you are living and more. He can fight for you. Hallelujah. When God acts, who can be against him? No one. And I'm telling you, if you ask God, if you give one step toward him, you'll be able to experience the supernatural moving in your life. And after your step, after your first step, God will fight for you. Because he is your strength. He is our strength. He is our refuge. Hallelujah. So the second lesson today is the Lord of time can change everything. And he fights for you, for your family. Hallelujah. And the third lesson that we have today, the Lord of times opens the way for you. The Bible says in the Exodus 14, verse 21 to 22. The Bible says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Hallelujah. Then Moses out his hand over the sea and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned into dry land. The waters were divided and Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. Hallelujah. You can read it in your home. Moses and the Israelites were before the Red Sea. They didn't know what to do. So God asked Moses to give the first step. He asked, why are you crying to me, Moses? Why are you asking me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, God is asking you to give the first step. He's asking you to move on. Move. He's the Lord of times. He will open the way to you. When you look, it seems you have no exit. You cannot go ahead because there is a red sea before you, my brother. Sometimes we are in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of storms. We look before us, in front of us, we have no exit. We look behind, the enemy is coming. The enemy is coming. We look beside, we are alone. And if you are in that situation now, you can pray to God. And you're going to listen from God that, move on. Give the first step. I am with you. What, you, what do you have in your hands? Hallelujah. Moses, he had a staff, like a stick in his hands. That was enough to God. God doesn't need too much. <laughs> God needs what you have in your hands. When Moses, he showed, I have just this staff, God. <laughs> God, it's, the God told him, it's enough. I want to use it. Raise up the, your staff and touch the Red Sea. And the Red Sea is going to be open. But for leave it, my brother, you have to give the first step. Hallelujah. So my brothers, that is enough. I think there are many people who want to have more money to help others. They want to have a nice instrument to praise God. They want to have an opportunity to preach in the church. They want to have time to spend with their family, with their children. They are always waiting to have something more to give to God. Something more to give to the poor. Sometimes some people, they, they, they told, they tell, like, if I have a nice car, I will give some lifts. <laughs> If I have more money, I will bless the church. Oh, I will. I will. If I have more time, more time enough, I will spend this time with my family. If the pastor gives an opportunity to me, I will preach the gospel. Brother, use what you have in your hands right now. 
It's a staff, a stick, <laughs> or is like that young guy with five breads and two fishes. It's enough, my brother. God can use what you have in your hands. Don't wait. God will use what you have to perform a miracle as he did it. He performed it in Moses' lap. So to Moses, he said, use the stuff you have in your hands and touch the waters. And the Bible says that the waters will be divided. Hallelujah. <laughs> Moses gave the first step. He used what he had in his hands and God performed miracles to him. What do you have in your hands? Think about what do you have in your hands? The Lord of time wants to use it to open up the way. He wants to open up the Red Sea before you to deliver you from the enemy and allow you to go to your promised land. Hallelujah. My friend, choose to give the first step today. Choose to use what you have already in the time of God. In the time of God will help you. God will help you. So the third lesson, the Lord of times opens the way for you. Hallelujah. My brother, God can change time in your favor. God, the Lord of times, he can change the time in your favor. God can accelerate time. God can suspend time. God can reverse time to bless you and show his glory. He doesn't allow time to control you. Do you know that? He wants you to control time and use it to live for him. To use your time in a good way. God uses the time to teach us. There is a time to born. We, we, we read a time to be born. A time to plant. A time to uproot. A time to heal. A time to build and rebuild. A time to love. A time to dance, a time to search, to keep, to be in silence. A time to speak, a time to love. There is a time for everything under heaven. And God has the control over time. He knows the right time to bless you. But he will make it step by step. And you have to give the first step. The Lord of times will show you the first step and he will give you the next step when you move. Don't wait a powerful word from God that he would say for you. You're going to do like that, that, and that. In the end, it's going to be like that. No. <laughs> he works step by step. So I invite you to move. Give the first step. In God's direction. Amen. When God tells you to do something. And you obey the Lord. Some supernatural thing. Will happen in your natural life. Because God is the Lord of times. And to finish this message. I want to tell you about Jesus. Nothing can stop Jesus. He is the Lord of times. Hallelujah. When Jesus, he was here on earth, he was 100% 100% God and 100% man. And to fulfill God's word, he had to die on the cross. But remember that he was and he is the Lord of times. In that age, 2000 years ago, around the Roman soldiers thought that the cross would kill Jesus. It would stop him. They thought that the grave was a safe place to hold Jesus' body. They thought the stone in front of the grave was so heavy it would stop Jesus' resurrection as he had promised. But they were wrong. Jesus died on Friday and they placed Jesus' body in a grave. But they didn't know Jesus was and is the Lord of all times. Hallelujah. Nothing can stop him, even time. Nothing can stop him, even death, even grave. In Matthew chapter 28 says that on Sunday, after Jesus' death, there was a violent earthquake, earthquake 
For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. The women were there looking for Jesus and the angel of the Lord said, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Nothing can stop our Savior. Time could not hold him in that grave. Space could not change Jesus. The stone could not stop Jesus. The cross, grave, death, nothing could hold Jesus. Because he is the Lord. The Lord of times. He fulfilled his word. His promise that he would die for us and he would overcome death to give us forgiveness and salvation. Hallelujah. And he did it. He told and he did it. It's done. He is the Lord of times. Hallelujah. So now you know you serve the God of times. Not, nothing is impossible to him. Nothing can hold God, even the time. He can go to the past. He can go to the future. He can fix whatever he wants. Sometimes we live traumas in our past. And we think that today we are not able to conquer it. Because it's happened in our past. But don't forget, now you are serving the Lord of times. He can go back in your past. He can fix your heart there. He can heal your scars. Hallelujah. And he come back, bring healing upon your life. The Lord of times. He stops the time for you. He opens the sea for you to walk and follow his purpose. He changes time to heal you. He goes in your past and he can transform your life completely. Hallelujah. He can heal in your heart. So what can stop God? Nothing. He is the Lord of times. So show your trust in Him. Give the first step. And He is asking you to give. Just to remind yourself, to Ezekiah, God asked, and the first step was to pray and believe in Him. Give an answer. So the Lord of times can bring back the good days to your life. Did you remember good days that you had before? The days of you join with your family, the days, the days even you join here in your church, when our doors, they were open. You came here, you received a hug, a kiss, you received a powerful word, you felt the God's presence here in this place. Good days. When you had friends inside of your home, in your room, when you got the, the guitar and you start to praise God with your brothers, with your family, when you open the, the Bible and you start to preach the gospel, even the square and the, the supermarket and another place that God used you, good days. When you study the Bible, when God woke, when God woke up you in the morning to go and seek His face, 2, 3 a.m., when you wake up in your bedroom and you felt it inside of your heart, you need to pray. You heard a nice voice, you need to pray, go, pray, bow now before God, seek His face, good days. When you saw many miracles happen in your life. When you saw many people receiving Jesus because they saw on you Jesus Christ. Good days. When your marriage was restored by God. When you had a nice time with your children. When you spent time with God, with your family together. When you receive that powerful word and that powerful word shake your body. Good days. My brother, give the first step. God wants to bring back good days for you. Hallelujah. It's not the end. 
<laughs> it's not, it's not, not the end of the things now. God wants to bring back good days to you. To Joshua, he had to go to the battlefield. And there, God stopped the sun for him. Hallelujah. The Lord of times changes everything and he fights for you. You are not alone. In that battlefield, you are not alone. God is beside you. Even better, God is in front of you and he's fighting for you. Don't forget it. Don't be afraid. Be courageous because God is with you and he's fighting your battle. Hallelujah. He is teaching you how to fight in this battle. And first thing that you have to do, believe on him because he is fighting for you. Hallelujah. In the third lesson to Moses, he believed in God and he used what he had in his hand. The Lord of times opens the way for you. Hallelujah. There is a way that is closed in your path you are waiting for God you are waiting a door an open door to you in your ministry even a job in your relationship the first thing that you have to do use the things that you have in your hand God gave you capacity <laughs> he gave you he gave you wisdom strength and you have to believe on him. And you have to show your belief. Trust in him and use what you have in your hands. To Moses, he used his staff. What do you have in your hands? Use. Believe in God. And the Lord of times, he can open the way for you. Hallelujah. My brother, what God is asking from you. Search your heart now. Bring it back to your mind what God asked you to do. What is he asking you to do? Give the first step and invite, God's, invite God to come with his time into your life. Amen. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. And don't forget that you serve the Lord of times. And he has the better for you in Jesus' mighty name. And amen. I'd like to invite Pastor Marcio. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Our God is a powerful God. But always for God to do something in our life. He's waiting for us to give the first step. Remember one thing. All the power is, is he, in His hand. But in order for him to do something for us, we need to give the first steps. One woman, she was sick at home. And she was saying to herself, if I just go to Jesus and touch him, I'm going to be healed. She was not lazy at home. She took a decision. I'm going to go to Jesus. Always for God to do something in our lives. He has the power. He can go in, into, our, in, into our past or in our future. He can open the doors. But you have to do something. Some, maybe you need, you need to forgive someone. Maybe in order for you to receive healing. You have some, a, bit, a hard heart. Or some bitterness is inside of you. And you need to forgive. This is the first step in order for God to move in your life. And I want to challenge you. Please, you need, you need to use what you have in your hands. Maybe you're going to say, okay, but I, I have so little. My money is so little. But do what that widow did. She prepared the bread for the prophet. And what happened with her, her life? Miracles happened in her life. God is waiting for you to do something. God is waiting for your faithfulness. Even in your tithes and offerings, sometimes we are not faithful. Or sometimes we are taking something that belongs to God. You need to test God. And God said, give me and test me. 
if I'm not going to bless you. In every area, you need to use your faith. You need to give to God what belongs to God. You need to give the first step. Then a miracle are going to happen in you. Amen? Do you receive this powerful word in your life? Because God is the God of times and God can change all the circumstances in your life. And I want to finish finishing this preach and praying for your life. Please close your eyes. The first step, you need to give the first step right now. Look to your life. What do you have in your hands? What do you have? Use it. Maybe it's little. Like that little children. She had just some breads and fish. But she gave. And a great miracle happened. Maybe you need to forgive people who hurt you. As soon as you forgive, healing are going to come over your life. Doors are going to open. Or maybe you are not have been faithful to God. Fix. Listen what God is speaking to you. Maybe you abandon the secret place. You don't pray anymore. You don't have time with God. Go back to your secret place with your life with God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word that we received today. And I want to bless all my brothers and sisters where they are listening to me, where my voice is going. I ask you in Jesus' name, touch their hearts. Move their lives, Father, to do what they have to do, Father. Oh, that they, their faith can grow, Father. They can give one step towards you, Father. In obedience to the word, in Jesus' name, heal their lives. The doors that you open, no one can close, Father. Open out the doors, bring healing, bring prosperity, bring bring salvation, Father, over our family, bring salvation over our relatives, our children, Father, we do pray for, for you, Father, to move, and we, we are going to give our step, Father, we are going to obey you, and to do what you have said for us to do, in Jesus' name we pray, and I bless all of you, and I declare, miracles are coming over your life. In Jesus' name, I declare, the Red Sea are going to open. And you are going to go and to walk. If the Red Sea don't open, you are going to go over the Red Sea. As Jesus did, he walked over the waters. And I declare, God is moving in your life. In Jesus' name, do you receive this word? May God bless you. May God anoint you. In Jesus' name, God, have a great week. In Jesus' name, amen.